Hey, thank you so much, Zoe. You guys look fantastic on the desk killing. Oh, I know yeah. Jake seems like the odd one out. I mean, you know, didn't get the memo <laughs> in the chat for uh, the chameleon out here to match with everybody. But yeah, I'm super excited, Necro. I'm on board with the desk and their predictions. I'm expecting Uprising to take this. I like the looks that we see from New York yesterday, but they are against the rain. They had some moments to shine. But man, when you take a look at the Uprising lineup, this is like the Avengers squad coming in together. It really is. I mean, what is there to else to say about the Boston Uprising here, except that they all have incredible legacy players on this team. You've got one of the best Winstons in the league in Smurf. You've got just a stellar backline for Lee Jae Gon and Izayaki that can lean into that double flex support. And then the DPS line, pair any of the DPS on the team together, and that is a recipe for success. But we do see Decay and Stryker in the starting lineup. And for New York Excelsior, I think a wild card factor for me is going to be Lep kicking things off for them. Yeah, Jake piloted perfectly. Lep being one of those players that you definitely want to look out for. I mean, during uh, you know our moments in Tier 2, we saw him mm -hmm. shine back in the days of Rush Vival, if you want to call him. He had a great <laughs> season Collegiate 2 within Northwood before his time on Houston. And you talk about this insane DPS lineup from Uprising, just the individual talent that we have here. I mean, let's also not forget, Dong Su is the head coach for this team, who was one of the assistant coaches on the Dragons when they were at their peak and won Overwatch League 2021. So not only are these individual pieces on the Uprising so intimidating, but it's so hard to match up when you are the New York Excelsior trying to prove a point. And we could probably expect the Sombra and Tracer to try to match up between these teams. I absolutely agree. Sombra and Tracer was one of the best looks that we saw from the New York Excelsior, really just trying to push that to make that match versus Atlanta Rain pretty competitive. And I, while I'm with the desk here, and I think that Boston Uprising is going to end up winning the match, I also wouldn't be super surprised if New York Excelsior gave them a bit of a run for their money. Absolutely. I mean, in my prize, I got a 3-0, but I honestly would not be surprised if we see at least a map taken. This is also on Lee Jong Tower as our first map where we've seen Lee Jae Gon go absolutely <laughs> sicko mode. It is Lee Jae Gon Tower for a reason. To see Kellen trying to take control over the bridge as he's going to be able to reposition right here too. I like trying to split the team right now. He's in some trouble as he's able to get right back to the hands of creative and left. Yeah, so Boston Uprising, they're going to go ahead and just be on standby here a little bit, looking for an opportunity to come back in oh. as New York Excelsior got in the back cap. But all those cooldowns aren't going to help you here now. And that was with an anti and a follow from Fitz to get the hack onto Izayaki, but Decay is just on another level, and they're holding forward here too. They already know that they have the aggression and the number advantage in their favor, aside from the fact that they were able to get the point on lock two. They gave some of the extra space to the New York Excelsior and were able to come out on top from that fight. I think you're okay with allowing New York Excelsior to get a bit of a foothold on that point and then come in with your own tools and resources when they're back online and take the control of the point back. Striker has been doing and putting up some absolute numbers over here, already going to have the tactical visor online. And that'll really be nice, especially when dealing with higher mobility characters like the Lucio and the Tracer. But, uh... Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in the pit, Izayaki going down off the map. Kellen coming in with the primal as the rest of the Excelsior move on to that point. Smurf will have the shot for the next fight as Lee Jacob's trying to get away. He did not get hacked, managing to get out of the grasp of Fitz, who's going to have the EMP for the next fight, Necro. Oh my gosh. It, it, could you imagine if the hack had actually gone through onto Lee Jacob? Gone, what a stagger that would have been. But he is able to get back to the rest of the team, and the sound barrier is going to be very, very important, as you did call out the EMP from Fitz. So Fitz just trying to look for a position with Boston Uprising playing in the white room here. It might be a little bit more difficult for Fitz to come in and grab every member of the team, but you really are looking for Lee Jake on. Oh, there's that EMP. The K gets sent down. The backline did get hit with the EMP, and just in time, here comes that sound barrier from Lee Jae Gon. That shatter catching Kellen and Lip as the New York Excelsior still have control over that point, but not for long as the rest of the Uprising are now trying to clear this point here after Lip gets hacked. One last member here as the reset is going to come in from Fitz. Boston Uprising now ready at 52% in climb. This has still been very, very back and forth, and it comes down to whether or not you're getting the value out of your ultimates. Creative with a huge pick on the striker may just be the opening that New York Excelsior need right now in order to get back into this one. I'm expecting another flip here, even if it's going to be just a raw fight. 
even in that fight too, would have been the EMP that would have come online. So I like the call to try to find an opportunity to try to disengage while Smurf is holding front lines here. Nano boots from Easy Yaki, anti onto Smurf. Kellen's out of this fight though, so number advantage now still in favor of Uprising. It's just gonna try to get right back into this fight after Creative and Kellen get taken down. In the immediate swap of Necker, we are seeing this back and forth consistently between the Uprising and the Excelsior. Yeah, I think a lot of that is just Boston Uprising wanting to give a little bit of that point away in order to get themselves into better position to actually take these fights. But they're still going to be able to get that progress back, and Striker has the EMP online this time. Left doesn't have that sound barrier, so it's going to be a little bit of an uphill climb for New York Excelsior to deal with this particular ultimate. Especially if you just get the front line here, Kellen's going to be a sitting duck. And I was always so scared to play on that bridge, too, when you have to look out for Lee Jagon. 95% <laughs> now, they gotta touch the point. Striker's got that EMP ready. Bitch doesn't have that to match. Soli Cycle's caught in that as overtime is activated, but Kellen gets put to sleep after popping the primal. Here comes what? the pin, and nobody touches the point. Psycho and Fitz were also right there, too. They were winning. All right. All they, right. they were winning the fight. New York. Oh, come on. Oh, my goodness. Okay, moving on. Mov moving swiftly forward. We're, we're, we're going to control center now. I got to see a replay of this. So so this is the final fight. You see at, oh, the EMP man. go through. Lep is on the other side of the map. And, and Kellen and is blocking everything down. A frame too late. He saw... He saw what was going on with Kellen, saw him get pinned, says, oh, wait, I can't help because I got to yeah. touch the point, force it uh, into overtime when he was the only one there. I, I firmly believe if Lep had actually gone back to the point there and not let that overtime expire, New York Excelsior could have won that fight, and this might be a little bit of a different story. But we do have to move on, Vicky. Control Center here, we're actually going to see a match of the Reinhardt Rush compositions. The only difference being the Symmetra as a stay piece here for Excelsior, and you have the Sojourn on the other side. Also love the look here between Psycho and Striker opting for the main. We know how crucial those main walls are in those close quarter fights, especially off to the side here, Decay in that back angle. Getting pinged up to just go for that small health pack as Excelsior managed to take control of the point first. Nice immortality field from Easy Yaki. He's going to be able to help out three of those members from Uprising. As the Ant Matrix is also called online, he got that relatively quick in comparative to creative. As Lep goes down, the sustainability won't be there for the Excelsior. And Uprising now are just clearing the point after they trade that out for Decay. Whoa. Ant Matrix now coming in, but the main wall immediately retaliating to block out some of the extra damage. Smurf handling business himself here, taking care of creative after the blizzard gets called in from psycho it's that back and forth here but uprising still haven't been able to fully clear the point and this has allowed the accessor to now roll back in reset call in the photon barrier and you're now still seeing uprising coming in with a fight here too necro decay is a problem that needs to be checked on that platform and behind the point Okay, there was a lot going on in the first, like, two minutes of this map. Um, but at the end of the day, Boston Uprising, they just seem really content letting the point go and waiting to get through some of these more high-value ultimates. New York Excelsior got a capture first. They were able to use the Amplification Matrix second. They also had the May Alt to expend there as well. And now they're going to get one right back. Oh, Kellen said, I am out with the swiftness avoiding that blizzard. Nice answer back and disengage for Excelsior to now re-engage with the sound barrier. Psycho now finding Smurf, forcing the uprising to lose out on all that extra space. I love the answer right there and the retaliation from Excelsior. They were able to react nicely to that blizzard now. They were. That was a really smart way for New York Excelsior to identify they could just back up, kite away from some of that damage. And all the while, Fitz had gotten a nice pick onto Lee Gone, which stunted Boston Uprising's ability to navigate away from the point. They just lacked that mobility to be able to change up their position in a macro level. And so New York, they can play this aggressive game with the Reinhardt here as well. Looking rough. Oh. Yeah, Fitz being able to find that first pick up to Easy Yaki. They do trade that though for left. Nice immortality coming in from Creative, who's about to have the Ant Matrix. This could turn things around here for the Excelsior. The trade off as Smurf took way too much damage. Fitz finishing off the job with Creative. Uprising again. It's a reset while the Excelsior already at 78%. 
Yeah, this is going to be the last fight for New York Excelsior here, and they have a lot to be able to throw at this one in order to keep control of the point. Kellen didn't expend the Earth Shatter in that last fight, even though he did have it available, and that's something that you could pair on top of the Blizzard from Psycho to just do a ton of dot damage here. Oh, Psycho in between the walls, he tosses out the Blizzard, forcing them to get contested in that choke point. Finn's getting the follow-up too. Look to your side, nobody from Uprising were able to touch. There was so much pressure and damage too. That Blizzard from Psycho nicely placed to prevent the Uprising from forcing it into overtime. This is a great example and reminder to everybody that Psycho is known for the May. It has one yeah. of the best May that we have ever seen in the Contenders Tier 2 scene. And I love to be able to highlight such a pocket pick for this player because you can't use it in every situation, but when you are going to be able to match the Reinhardt Rush versus the Reinhardt Rush, Psycho was just absolutely on point. Got those blizzards up and running way faster than what we ended up seeing there on the other side. I remember some cheeky plays from Psycho back in the T2 days on King's Row with that May. His Echo Tracer obviously yeah. on another level there too. But I love the adjustments that we're seeing right now too. Decay Striker gonna match up with the Excelsior. Kellen already getting hacked and hit with the Anti to start off this fight. And this is exactly what we heard Reinforce talking about, is that we should see the Sombra Tracer versus Sombra Tracer from both of these teams, knowing that Decay and Stryker are in the starting lineup for Boston. And so to be able to see this mirror match here, it's going to be really important who gets this point first. Uh, That's a way to start this off, Creative! <laughs> Yeet! Sending Decay right back to the spawn. We'll be able to come back quickly here, but the point with a number advantage and the space already bought by Kellen gear two. Kellen, creative brother, is a problem in that back line after left is found easy. Yaki make it two onto striker. BJ gone tower. I mean, Lev has made his way right into that conversation, taking the point first with the rest of the Excelsior. This is huge for Excelsior. Not only did they win such a massive fight they're able to get that point capture first creative is almost to the nano boost and at this point new york excelsior are outpacing boston uprising in their ultimate charge and rotation kellen does get taken down here but you still have tools to be able to throw at this in case you want to try to keep control at this point the nano boost onto cycle he's trying to find an opportunity to lay down some of that extra damage but he's taking a lot of damage himself now but they were able to find that first pick onto easy yaki he won't be in this fight he won't have the nano boost to allow the rest of uprising to stay in contention and in power of this point to kane striker as striker has the EMP. he landed it on three finding left and taking care of fits while cycle and kellen want to evacuate here striker trying to cut off the rotation but it's going to be a reset as uprising stay on the point so New York Excelsior had a really big lead there in terms of that ultimate charge, and unfortunately, they threw it away. Kellen getting taken down there was a sure signal that New York Excelsior shouldn't have thrown anything else at that fight, but maybe the hope was still there had they gotten another pick and then tried to invest those ultimates. But Boston Uprising now, they're going to be approaching that halfway point for their own capture progress, and Fitz already down. And he would have had the EMP too yeah. to help with this engagement, which would have been nice to see, especially Kellen having that primal ready. Trying to find his contention as Striker off to the side, trying to be cheeky to call up Psycho. Nothing to see here. Oh, he gets detected. They call him out immediately afterwards. He's forced to get away. Oh my goodness, the kite around is going to be very important here, especially because you don't want to get caught in this damage from Smurf especially when he has the ability to just start juggling everybody on the New York Excelsior here. Especially right behind that point, getting those environmental kills. The sound, bar sound barrier was <laughs> called in from left. I like to disengage from Uprising here, though, because now they're going to be able to try to re-engage. Here comes the EMP, deleting Smurf from that follow-up. They trade that for Creative, though, who would have had the nano boost on line. The Excelsior do manage to still retain that control over the point next round. Yeah, this control is going to be really good here for New York Excelsior to start to match up that progress. And when they've already expended the EMP, they're really looking for an opportunity to just buy some time for Lep to get the sound barrier online, creative to get the nano, just anything to be able to deal with the EMP that Striker is building up to. You probe the monkey and he goes Winton mode right there. You saw him trying to contest and delay the uprising right at that choke point, but now they make their way through after taking care of Kellen. And Nana boost onto Psycho again. 
controlling that forward choke point. Lee Jae Gon's trying to bait out something cheeky over to the side here, but with their feet planted on this point neck, they're already reaching that 74% to even that out with the uprising. Big stuff here for New York Excelsior, but they also have to take these economy pushes when Boston Uprising have the EMP, the primal rage they're using now, the pulse bomb. They're also gonna get the point flip back. And yeah, you talk about the EMP, it did land onto Kellen, and now you currently see Fitz and Psycho out of this fight. Uprising right back in control over this point, and they'll still have the Soundberry and the Nano Boost to work with. Yeah, so much sustain on the side of the Uprising that I would be surprised if New York Excelsior could manage to take this back. They also have to get to the point first. Over time now ticking away here. Smurf has already found Fitz. That's just uprising in the driver's seat to have that a number advantage. Overtime still being delayed here. Huge anti, no recall here from Decay. He's hiding right behind the shield of Smurf as the sound barrier gets called in from Lee Jae Gone. Striker Decay now finding their individual picks up to Kellen and Creative. Easy Yaki Gone still uprising with four men still alive. 99% overtime now taking away. Celsius need to try to contest. Psycho out. Doesn't look oh. like anybody but Leb could do anything, but he gets him deleted the moment he sees them through the window. Oh, what a valiant effort, though, by the New York Excelsior, and what a fun give and take to watch as well between these two teams, Vicky. I like it. I mean, again, I saw New York Excelsior yesterday putting up such a good fight against a team yeah. that is considered one of the best in the leagues right now, the Rain, and here we have them, again, putting up an amazing fight against the Boston Uprising, but the back and forth in the economy at the very end did favor the Uprising network. Oh, it really did. I mean, just nine times out of 10, it felt like Uprising had an answer or just a way to be able to keep the advantage that they had built. And even though it looked so back and forth because Boston Uprising were giving up the point just for a couple of percentage ticks, they still had a very confident idea of how they would really like to be able to play on the two rounds that they did win. So Market's just a really great example of going in there with the EMP and just yeah, keeping an advantage. Keeping incredibly close, too, if you look at the DPS lineup between Fitz, Psycho, Decay, and Striker. We do have King's Row for our map number two, Necro. I'm excited to see how this goes down mm -hmm. now between the New York Excelsior and the Boston Uprising. After they take that slight lead, we're going to see King's Row on the other side of this break.
down in the car One time give it all Pass it open hard Let me see your job Get down in the car One time give it all Pass it open hard Let me see your job what an intro video talk about jamming it out here love to see this look right now to the new york excelsior versus the boston uprising although the uprising have taken map number one necker and that was the first look that we've been able to see from the boston uprising opening up their overwatch league 2023 season excited to see more but we are seeing some change-ups in the roster between both these teams we are so we've got twilight now coming into the roster for the boston uprising to really allow boston to play that double flex support lineup and similarly for new york excelsior we've got halo now going to be taking Taking that place next to Creative. And we saw Halo and Creative in the starting lineup and in the match yesterday versus the Atlanta Reign. And I feel like they just showed us some really, really phenomenal backline when it came down to Creative playing the Ana and then Halo actually coming in and playing some of the Brigida and just really helping to make sure that the backline was gonna stay safe versus another type of dive. Which isn't too surprising too, you know, seeing that our second map is King's Row, we could expect that, especially when they are on that high ground right before that payload is activated out of the garage. So I'm definitely expected to see that, seeing how also the New York Excelsior has been trying to match that with the Tracer Sombra. But since there's also a lot of verticality and a lot of open sight lines, Necra, would it also be surprised to see Fitz sticking on that Hanzo? I think the Hanzo makes a really, really, sm like, it just really works for something like the attack if you're expecting a big shield to come out. Maybe you end up playing around uh, Sigma or maybe even just having a Reinhardt there just to be able to break break the shield. But I think it makes a little bit more sense to maybe use that as a Sonic Arrow first, try to feel out what's going on around you, and then you can switch over to something that might play a little bit better into what New York Excelsior was running yesterday. So fits with the Symmetra Teleport. I definitely expect them to go back into spawn and go towards, yeah, the Hanzo for now, maybe the Sombra later. I like this decision here too, trying to see how they're going to approach the high ground here off to the right. Kellen already hacked by Striker. And when I took, when I got to see Fitz here, when he arrived from APAC land after being with the Dynasty for the last four seasons, I was always really excited to see how the Sombra was going to play against the other Western teams here. Stick it to the Hanzo though, so that way they could try to boot off the uprising backline here. The dive coming in as Iziaki gets set incredibly low. Love the follow that we're seeing, but they do trade that out after Psycho was able to find Iziaki. Smurf answering back, finding Psycho now. That's two down for the Excelsior. It's maybe a reset right here. Number of disadvantages in favor, though, of the uprising. At this point, the Uprising can play a little bit more forward. It does create some space and time for Izayaki to get back into the defense. And I love the position that Twilight is taking in the window with the Ana. Because Smurf can start to play around the Mandata statue. And as you can see, just if you watch Decay, they're going to be able to go through these health packs and just kind of keep this territorial control until oh Izayaki comes back. That's he not good. melted him <laughs> off of that anti Kellen taking full advantage of that. Yeah, Uprising losing out on Smurf first. It's okay. We will see if he can pull out a play here as Twilight does have that Nano Boost ready and he's got that Pulse Bomb ready here too. In this elongated fight, if they can try to delay this, Striker will be able to have the EMP in the middle of this fight. I think the EMP could be really help beneficial for Boston to be able to kind of keep control of the defense, but it's starting to crumble. Maybe Fitz gets taken out here, but Psycho's still making quick work of the back line. Oh, and he got put to sleep in the middle of jumping right over that fence line too. Now the Primal's gonna keep him at bay right in the spawn doors of the Excelsior. Smurf says, get me out. He doesn't even have the health back right next to him. He's gonna have to go for the reset here. Well, the Excelsior already get the payload out of the garage, Necra, and they'll also have some space to work with after they were able to get that late pick onto Smurf. 
Kellen just, like, main tank diffed Smurf right there, like, egoed him in a corner. Uh, the <laughs> the boy had already been captured there for New York Excelsior, but Smurf got caught so out of the way that New York are going to have plenty of time to get this cart rolling before Smurf has a chance to get back. And if he wants to get back in time, he's investing those mobility cooldowns with the Winston jumps in order to actually get there. Uh, that's a lot of investment, and they're going to be able to take the bookstore. Oh, the EMP coming in, Halo Creative in that line of sight as the follow comes in as well between Smurf and Decay, but they do trade that for both of their back lines here. The Primal is activated from Smurf. Striker also falls incredibly <laughs> low. Kellen is out <laughs> as Smurf gets the answer back, getting the revenge that he wanted before retaliating and managing to back away in time. Just give him some space on, to allow the rest of Uprising to reset in bro. Uh, that felt like another ego... <laughs> There you go, check there. Smurf just popping the Primal. A lot of the Boston Uprising were already down. Goes in for the Primal Rage, just to be able to knock Kellen away. But the attacking spawns are a touch closer. So it's going to be a 5v5 already as the New York Excelsior pop the Rally to kick off this next fight. Ooh, nice anti to the back line of Excelsior, but with what? that EMP and the follow-up, the K gets shut down. Smurf meeting him right back in the spawn. Psycho's going to be able to hold forward now, harass Twilight, forcing Izayaki to pop the rally because they don't want to give this momentum to the Excelsior. They're nearing that next corner, right next to point B right here, and they want to try to contest and re-engage in time. You can see Striker right around the corner who could get his EMP online for this fight. Absolutely. That's what Boston Uprising are playing for right now. Either that or Decay gets a big pulse bomb pick onto a high value target. Smurf gets hit with an anti. Hey, looking also for an opportunity with that pulse bomb onto Halo, and he gets it. You'd love to see that. Twilight's also about to get the Nana Boost cycle, trying to answer back, but doesn't get the same success with his own pulse bomb. Meanwhile, Striker has an EMP ready. We'll be able to hold it for the re-engage from Excelsior. I like this call from the Excelsior because now they're trying to find the opportunity after losing out on Halo. Yeah, I think you just have to back up here. Maybe another thing you could do is try to force Striker to use the EMP, but you're really looking at Getting out the EMP now and then going in with some of your other ultimates. Fitz is going to have that back online soon, too. EMP coming out from Striker. Does that on creative. Halo also gets taken out first in this fight again. So it's back to the drawing board and some more time wasted away from the Excelsior. Creative does get hacked. Kellen trying to protect him. Striker being a nuisance that he needs to be after losing out on Decay. All right, well, Halo's going to be able to get back relatively quickly. And now it's time for Fitz to go in and strike. Whoa! Okay, just kidding. I would wait. I would wait. Nano boosted Smurf <laughs> is not something that oh. I would contend against. What? With that? What we'll follow up? What we'll follow up opportunity? I mean, Cycle was right there. Kelly was far away, but the uh. the follow up opportunity after that EMP, the the they had the plan right there, Necker, but the execution was not what we we're expecting when you land that EMP onto both Twilight and Izayaki. Yeah, I agree that some type of miscommunication might have happened there. Uh, would have been even better for New York Excelsior to wait, utilize the EMP until they were able to come back into this particular fight. Point B attack is very difficult because of how much control the defending team can have around the high ground above this point, as well okay. as their spawns being relatively close. So you kind of need every bit of firepower that you can put towards this fight in order to actually take it. And that EMP just felt like it would have been needed. Maybe Especially seeing that Striker is about to get it, right? Yeah, and yeah. then with Kellen having the Primal, I mean, Halo going down again from Decay, who's been absolutely terrorizing this backline. And that Pulse Bomb now on top of Creative. We're reaching that potential final fight territory, and the numbers are not in favor of the Excelsior. You got less than 15 seconds on the clock, and Decay is feeling himself. Decay is absolutely feeling himself right now. He's going to go ahead and go into the back line, just waiting for the perfect target because Creative is still trying to get out of spawn. Psycho as well is an EMP on the back line just to make sure nobody can touch the cart. Halo again taken out first as overtime is activated thanks to Kellen who's falling incredibly low. He manages to jump away, literally living with a pixel of health. Halo will be able to get in with the rally, but they need to touch the point first. They had to re-engage. Too much damage, too much pressure after Izayaki had also popped that rally. Uprising, hold the Excelsior back before they get that second point. Yeah, that was such a tough position for the New York Excelsior to be in. As soon as you get that singular EMP into the front line, 
there, it's really tough to try to figure out who's going to touch from there. All your cooldowns are on lock. You don't necessarily have the mobility available then to try to cycle through who's going to continue to activate the overtime. And you also just didn't have a whole lot left in the tank in order to, to contend with the ultimates that Boston Uprising had available. Maybe the defense spells a little bit of a different story. I think New York Excelsior had some really bright moments on their attack, just might have gotten a little bit dizzy in terms of when to use the ultimates. You compare Fitz and Stryker too, from what we've seen, Stryker being able to get that EMP online a tad bit faster. He's been able to hack mm -hmm. 15 enemies versus Fitz, who's only hacked 10. And then in terms of the EMP, it's very close. We haven't seen that high, high impact that we would have liked to see, but nonetheless, it is that timing. Like you mentioned, Necro and Stryker has been able to EMP five enemies versus Fitz. So far, he's only been able to EMP four. Yeah, I think that just makes it a little bit tougher for them to be able to just kind of keep a good eye on what the ultimate rotation should look like here. But <laughs> creative is going to okay. YOLO and wow. <laughs> oh, 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 he still got it. OK, oh, to came in that swap too. and he deleted the anti. That was a nice little cheeky anti from across the field. A different oh, approach so now, good. too. I love it. I love seeing that happen off the gates. Yeah. Never gets old. No, especially uh, look at how much all oh charge creative got from that as well. 8% right off the bat, already climbing towards a nano, but Twilight's just trying to keep up. Uh, Fitz won't be able to keep up here. Decay finding him off on the high ground, finding Kellen. It's clearing every corner of this point as Psycho is forced to call in the recall, trying to get away in time because they're going to have to give this space over to the Uprising. Look at the way that Decay, alongside Izayaki, has been able to control so much space in that archway. Now they'll be able to get that payload out without even having any sort of contention from the Excelsior's defense. That was a super, super fast take there. And Boston, at this point, are playing just to try to get past this archway. And then they should have some other ultimates online, like the Nano, give that over to Smurf, cycle through to the EMP, Decay getting a Pulse Bomb online pretty soon, too. So they just need to wait until they have their full team back. But spawns right there. We shouldn't take too long. The wait here from Psycho, too, is going to get that Pulse Bomb online soon. Fitz also opting to swap right back over to the Hanzo. See, we're going to see through this archway as Kellen is still trying to contest on the high ground just to prevent more of that aggression from Decay, who is absolutely going to rain from the high ground. Mm -hmm. Looking for an opportunity to keep <laughs> harassing Creative, who has that Nano Boost online soon, Necra. Yeah, if you take that off the board, that spells a lot of success there for Boston to move forward. But I think you can just... Oh. Do you want the EMP? I don't think you need much else on top of that. Oh man, especially when it lands on three, including the entire backline. Decay is just here to finish cleaning up everything else. What a mess they made there from the Excelsior after following with Striker's EMP. They literally have not been stopped once, Necro, since they got this payload moving. Yeah, they they might not at all, actually. I mean, this is a creative just now got a nano boost online. Maybe you're able to use that in order to help beef up Kellen's damage output. But uh, otherwise, like the K could just land a big pulse bomb has been holding on to it for a little while now, waiting for oh. the right target. OK, maybe maybe don't use your ultimates now here, Boston. He got deleted. He got deleted off that anti too and the follow-up hit from Fitz. Nice anti coming in from Twilight to answer back. That cost Fitz his life. No dragon strike on board, but it's a patient wait and all the time in the bank that Uprising could work with. Talk about three minutes, 35 seconds. Decay is still a problem that is trying to isolate Psycho here as the rally is popping Izayaki. Payload's still moving along. Now here comes that nano boost that you mentioned, Necro, between Creative. Kellen also has that primal right after this nano boost is done to just go in for the reset. Rico's activated after getting hit with that anti. Fitz could also come in, clear that payload with his dragons, but he doesn't stay alive long enough because Smurf is able to meet him with a primal of his own. They also lose out on Twilight here, losing out on two bodies, only sets three up here to stay on the payload. Three minutes and Smurf still has not been dealt with. Dragon's coming in, he's looking behind him just in case if he's trying to go for a different off angle. Don't know where those dragons went to Oblivion. Okay, it took a bit, maybe coming in from spawn, but now it's a bit of a split up here for the Uprising and some breathing room for the New York Excelsior.
That's exactly what New York Excelsior was hoping for because it just felt like it was one thing after another coming in from Boston Uprising. And they're going to have even more to throw at this point as Twilight is going to have that nano boost online. Striker's going to have another EMP. This is a mountain of a molehill. I don't even know what else to call it here. Uh, and that's a great way to start here for Boston. This should be a cap soon. Already starting off here with the Nana Boost after finding that first pick. Striker, like you mentioned, has that EMP ready. Twilight getting rest on the back. The EMP coming in has been able to find Creative and Halo. No sustain left for the Excelsior. While Smurf is going absolutely monkey crazy out here. He's able to clear the entirety of the front line. Yeah, Psycho, you could have that on Decay, but the rest of the Uprising are able to walk through map number two here. Woo, what a map. New York Excelsior put up a heck of a fight. It felt like on their attack, maybe missing a couple of their ultimate timings, but Boston Uprising, they don't skip a beat here. That was a very fast attack push from them. It's just so difficult too, when you talk about the amount of space bought in from Smurf at the very end, how the backline was being harassed. Halo, unfortunately, going down first a lot. You can see that bulls bump from Decay, finding its mark here. And then I believe this is the fault that we saw orig uh, originally from the EMP hit too. We saw it happen so many times, the communication flowing beautifully mm -hmm. here for the Uprising team, but Decay basically created this King's Row as his playground. I mean, Decay and Striker just went in as the perfect pair. You know, and whatever target was hacked, there was immediate follow-up there from the rest of the Boston Uprising, and they were able to get it onto the backline targets, which just completely negated New York Excelsior's ability to stay alive in those fights. So Boston, they're on a good start for this match. Yep, sitting at match point right now, we got Junkertown for a map number three on the other side of this break.
Welcome back, everybody. Boston Uprising. Oh, look at those faces as they stroll right in on the stage. I wasn't expecting this appearance out here with the Boston Uprising watch party. Shout out to everybody who made their way out for this watch party. It sounds super hype in their necker. Oh my gosh, the yeah, flags are waving. Look at this crowd. Oh man, I'm so excited even more for LAN. Are you kidding me? All right, all right. <laughs> really back in after that hype walk-in. Boston Uprising are currently sitting at match point, Necker, and we are seeing some change-ups between both of these teams going into map number three on Drucker Town. Yeah, wow. That is an opener, and I feel like Boston Uprising not only have the crowd behind them, but they've got the wind in their sails, Vicky, because they're on a roll right now. I've been able to win the first two maps of the series, and on match point here, Junkertown, this is where they're bringing out the big guns. That's right. We've got Bird Ring into the roster here. Striker's going to take a little bit of a sit out. We're also going to bring Kalios in as well, maybe play something like the Sigma on this map in particular. We're taking a small adjustment on the Newark Excelsior as well, where we've got Psycho out, bringing Shockwave in. But this is the battle of the snipers. I can't wait to see if that's what actually comes to fruition here. Yeah, of course, with those open sight lines, I wouldn't be surprised either. Seeing Excelsior starting off on the defense here. Still not over that hype, man. I love seeing those watch parties go crazy. Uprising looking so happy, too, getting that boost from the crowd. Yeah. Talk about staying cohesive. All right, you know what? Fake news out here <laughs> with what was going on in scrims. Let's almost say, you know, because they're looking pretty confident. They're looking great right now, Necra. We're getting started right now on their potential last map. Yep, this could be the match ender here for Boston Uprising. And on the defense right now, they're trying to figure out how to place Bird Ring on the map in order to get those somber hacks in the back line of the New York Excelsior as those attacking spawn doors open. But all the while, Fitz is doing the same, scouting out whether or not there's some nice access to these health packs to hack, and is also pinging on the map. That's a really smart strategy to just kind of let your team know where you want to aim. Aim big. You know, yeah, and what's nice too is the information that Fitz is going to be able to tell the rest of the Excelsior. Or rather, to tell the rest. Yeah, of his team right here, depending on where we're going to see the positioning from Twilight. You can see him in the back now. Uprising on the other side currently. Shockwave going to be able to dive right back in into that side room. Between Decay, though, he has been an absolute problem. The change up here is going to be Shockwave right now with that Hanzo pick, trying to find Bird Ring on the other side after Kalios does get hacked. Just trying to re-counter this the rotation too, and I like this call because you know that high ground is going to go in favor right now for the Uprising. Yeah, they have access for all of the stairs, even just where we saw Twilight sitting in the window. Got to reposition a little bit because Fitz is up there trying to contest Twilight on the high ground, but now you're just kind of corralling all of Boston Uprising into a building. Oh, they are sandwiched. Oh, yeah. I like the counter rotate. Now, huge anti coming in. Kellen was alive for just a little bit too long right before they finish him off with a pixel of health. As Shockwave also meets them right back in the spawn. The rest of Uprising are cleaning up the Excelsior in that side room. That was chaotic in such a small close quarter fight that they had to deal with, Necro. Yeah, and at that point, I kind of thought that New York Excelsior may be able to get the upper hand, right? They had everybody sandwiched in there from the Boston Uprising. They still had Kellen alive to be able to put up that shield and hope to get that damage down into the room. But all the while, I actually think that it helped to amplify the healing output of Twilight and Nisayaki. So they are on an absolute tear right now. Having the Nano Boost available, going to have the Rally as well. Despite the fact that Halo also has hers up and running, it comes down to these EMPs too. Like, do you get the timing of the rally right versus the EMP on Bird Ring or Fitz? Oh man, and with Shockwave going down, he hasn't had a great time so far at the start. You talk about the rally now activated from Kalo, the Nano Boost now coming in from Twilight. It's another cleanup here from Uprising just to finish off the rest of the Excelsior. Talk about impact too. You talk about the EMP that we could be seeing between Bird Ring and Fitz. Bird Ring has already hacked over six enemies so far. Mm -hmm. He was able to get that EMP pretty quickly. Fitz does have that, of course, to match that with Bird Ring, but it just hasn't been the same to say for Shockwave, who has been contested every time. I mean, after a couple of minutes, Isayaki is also the only member on the new uh, on the Boston Uprising to have died. 
That's it. <laughs> oh, the EMP does only find Kellen here from Bird Ring. Maybe not getting that impact that they were expecting, especially with this kind of rotate that we're seeing from the Excelsior from the high ground. Here comes the Dragon through Shockwave, just trying to clear some of that extra space. Playing so split up, though, is the Uprising in a very nice methodical way. Look at Decay also trying to isolate creative. The follow from Bird Ring. The EMP does land on to Decay and Izayaki, but the Rally has been activated here, too. They do lose out on Twilight, only relying on Izayaki for that sustainability. But the case still remains to be a problem right now. The follow from Kalios, how do you see that Flux activated too? And at this point, you're uh, up against a timer. You've got 18 seconds remaining, and New York Excelsior have yet to capture this very first objective. You're looking at Creative's Amplification Matrix, hopefully to buy some space. Oh, oh the accretion? Find that snipe real quick on Kalios. Less than five seconds out on the clock, Necra, and just in time when they needed it, they get those three picks. They get that first checkpoint. You could already see Kelly getting into position to clear some of that extra space, trying to come out where Uprising want to rotate on the high ground. Yeah, that did end up happening close enough to overtime that New York Excelsior still only have oh. the baseline time to work with. But yeah, Kellen taking okay, this aggressive look. approach. I love this look now from the New York Excelsior. Seems like they've woken up a little bit now that they've been able to get a couple of picks. They're pushing all the way forward. Pillow finally is moving, as you can see, in the back. But this is a good position from Kellen to hold this choke point right now because you can see how the Uprising were desperate to try to contest up there, too. You saw Twilight and Izayaki originally were taking that position. They denied some of that extra space. And with Creative and Halo now backing up, they're going to be able to find another repositioning method here so that way they can continuously keep oppressing the Uprising because they're about to have wow. fits with that EMP. Necro, wow, Chalk right with that hit on the head of Bird Ring. Now the Nana Boost coming in from Twilight. Halo's about to get that rally. It's going to be important as the Gravitic Flux is online first for Kellen. Clears up some of that extra space here as Kalios is going to try to rotate over to the back end of the Excelsior. So much damage now coming in between Shockwave and Fitz. And this is what we had to see in that first point here for the Excelsior. This is exactly what we were hoping to see. I mean, Excelsior is just going on an absolute momentum swing. Finally, getting a team fight win against the Boston Uprising. Now they've gotten through the second checkpoint with quite a bit of ease here. They did have to expend the EMP, but they still have Halo's Brigida Rally to try to contend against an incoming one from Bird Ring. But I got to give a lot of credit here to Fitz as well. Actually been able to outpace a lot of the damage that Bird Ring has been putting out on that counterpart Sombra. Over 1k damage more uh, and doing a, a, quite a bit of heavy lifting here for the team in terms of eliminations and just overall damage. Yeah, the swap around too. He's been able to hack 16 enemies so yeah. far too on this attack. Beautiful. Gravitic Flux was called in. Bird Ring does have that EMP ready with a rally too from Izayaki. He gets shut down, but the EMP still lands on four. Nice anti, no follow up as the rally from the rest of the uprising can allow him to reposition, allow Decay to take care of this back line. Now it's back to the drawing board for the Excelsior, but they did get a lot of extra credit on that second point, like you mentioned there, bro. Yep. They still have to try to pass the class, though, and it might be a little bit tough. They did get out a bunch of ultimates from the Boston Uprising, though, so it's going to be Twilight's Nano as the last little piece of the puzzle as we approach a minute and a half remaining. And New York, they got to take a bit of an eco push here. They don't have a whole lot of gas in the tank, and when you're contending against that Nano Boost from Twilight as well, and you also just got staggered there as Creative gets taken down, you just need to go back to the drawing board and take a little bit of a breather. Get Fitz into position before you try to make your entrance again. I love watching accretions just coming out of left field. Both Kellen and Kalios have been on point with these accretions. Kellen landing eight, Kalios landing six out here now. So you try to go in for reposition. Less than a minute on the clock currently for the Excelsior to get that payload to the finish line, Necra. It's just been a little bit of economy, like trying to get that EMP back online. Kellen, of course, looking at the Gravitic Flux as a great option to deal with the high ground pressure that Boston Uprising is putting on them. Walking up the stairs first, I really like being able to try to pressure them down at least over to the rotating platform and then see if they're able to get something done there. But someone's got to push the cart. You, you can't hey, yeah, Someone's got to push the cart. They're prioritizing their positioning, but you have less than 20 seconds on the clock here. It's Kalios has aggravating flux here. Kellen's gonna answer that too. Halo and Creative fell low. They get to restabilize now. 
Less than 10 seconds. The payload is moving around that corner, but they're gonna stay on top of that for the overtime. EMP coming in. Halo Creative get cleaned up. Easy Yaki went crazy at the end, too, with Twilight. Overtime, no one left here for the Excelsior after they got that team wipe on the, the team uprising. Looking great on this defense. I like the plan from the Excelsior, though, Necker. I like how they try to prioritize that high ground positioning, but they didn't have a lot of time to work with after that contest on that first point. Yeah, uh, they they were just kind of running out of time on all fronts there, even though that second point did go by just a little bit quicker. But I think ultimately, though, when you look at that those final moments, you were hoping to see a bit more out of the Gravitic Flux. There was a fantastic answer on Boston as Twilight donated over the Nano into Kalios to be able to keep him alive. And then Kalios was able to clap back with a Gravitic Flux of his own. And smart targeting there from the Boston Uprising. They took out Creative before Creative could actually land down the Immortality Field. And the Anti on mm. top of that, that was a clean team fight win for the Boston Uprising to be able to win that final defensive fight. Especially seeing the fall that we saw between Twilight and Easy Yaki on the high ground, I really like the positioning mm -hmm. countered from Uprising whenever they call out where Excelsior are trying to get on the high ground. Trying to boot him off there too. Making a swap up now. Excelsior are going to be on the defense here. To see what we're going to see coming out from the Uprising, especially seeing that they have that momentum in their favor and how great they were in terms of that attack on that second point. Or rather, of their defense on that second point. Yeah, I think that that was a really, really great kind of litmus test. And unfortunately, this may be the, the last round, but there are still some signs of life here on the New York Excelsior that may be able to bring them some favors. <laughs> I didn't want to talk Love about it. it yet because it just wasn't worth it. We saw Life Weaver a little bit earlier today, which was definitely not on anybody's bingo card, but I don't expect to see it in this particular match. It was a great strategy, though, just to be able to pop Decay up, see if he could quick pop shot, and then switch. But Widowmaker Bird Ring? Bird Ring Widowmaker? Vicky? Oh, he's trying to look for an angle right now. I love how we also saw that previously from Outlaws, and then Valiant did it too. I want to see more of that probably go down with Life Weaver. So just see if you can get that cheeky pick, but Bird Ring may not need it. He does land those two pinks here. Shockwave is able to get away. Where are we trying to say, if you're going to check me, try to check me here. Looking down those li line of sights, down that mm -hmm. middle area. Now you see Kali is trying to duke it out with Kellen Halo going in for the shield bash. The rest of the Uprising trying to counter-rotate over on the other side with Burbring still able to get in a defensive position, but they call him out. He rotated just a little bit too late. Necker and Shockwave was able to come out on top of that fight, but then Decay is harassing your front line. Can't ignore Decay out here when he's also about to get the pulse and clean up the rest of the team. Love the follow-ups that we're also seeing between Decay and Izayaki, because man, do I love me some Izayaki Zen. I do too, and those Discord orbs be looking mighty juicy for the team to follow up on at the moment. And so not only do you have the hack from Bird Ring, but just explosive glass cannon-like damage coming through from all sides of the Boston Uprising. That's a quick point A capture there, Vicky. The time to work with, look at that, 4 minutes, 40 seconds. Twilight's about to get the Ant Matrix, could clear up this high ground right with that window. Some easy Yaki put in the damage, but Shockwave being able to find him as that single out pick right down that tunnel. It's another pick here onto Twilight. I love these angles that we're seeing now from Shockwave. Fitz now also finding Kalios is another reset and more time wasted from the Uprising. This was necessary too for the Excelsior because Shockwave is one of those momentum-based players, Necro. Absolutely. We saw Shockwave make an appearance on the Vancouver Titans last year and was pretty standout from the very beginning in terms of just what he was able to offer on that, uh, like the Hanzo, just uh, the, all some of the other more long-range DPS heroes. And so it was great to be able to see that and still put up a stellar performance he was back over on Ex Oblivione as well. So oh, yeah. love to see him back in here and the Hanzo just looking super clean. Throwing me all the way back, Necro. Yeah. Love those times here too, <laughs> trying to shine. Fitz is about to get that EMP, but he needs help. He needs healing. So did Shockwave, the Gravitic Flux coming in from Kalios. Nice mortality from Twilight to let him to the, take that position on top of the high ground. Looking right through that window here too is Creative and Kellen. 
Ziaki backing up in time too to try to give that support over to Kalios while also fixated on the payload. You can't sneak that right through us here. Tells you're trying to contest them. Oh, ooh. Twilight also being able to find Kellen at the very end. Dragon Strike coming in Necro to clear out that payload. Oh, the wow. EMP now coming in. That cost easy Yaki. He got hacked in that EMP. No transcendence as the uprising now lose out on Birdring and Izayaki. The numbers swing right back in favor of the Excelsior. But here comes to K. Harassing Halo, taking care of Halo, and getting that second point. Oh, that looked like it could have been such a big hero play from Fitz if there was the follow up on top of the EMP. But there just wasn't. And now. We're seeing Boston Uprising one team fight away from being able to win the map, win the series. We see some switches from Fitz and Shockwave over to the Hanzo and the Widowmaker, respectively. So they're really relying on their mechanical skill right now to be able to keep Boston Uprising from making it through to that final checkpoint. It also bypasses the Transcendence healing if they're able to just oh. headshot. Oh, that, that was such an answer back because Decay has been a problem. He has mm -hmm. over 2k damage over Fitz and Shockwave. He's died twice, Necra. He has 20 Illims and has died twice. That was the second time we finally see him die. And that is, that's what's Fitz and Shockwave swapping over to the double sniper. That is unbelievable. Like, this is self-sustainability from Decay has just been really big oh, there. Times. But there you go. You've just doubled it, Vicky. There, <laughs> third death there for Decay. And this is a great... Look right now on this third point, Excelsior to hold on this defense on this position that Fitz is currently sitting in because right behind him is that different off angle that Shockwave is also going to be holding. So they could be covering a lot from the approach that Decay wants to go in with Bird Ring, who's going to try to find an opportunity to try to split mm -hmm. up the back line that is the Excelsior now. Yeah, but you only have two minutes and 50 seconds to work with here if you are Boston. And when I say that, it's if that's not a huge time bank that Boston Uprising have behind them. We're perfectly out here. Two minutes, 40 seconds. Graphitic Flux activated. The Immortality. Oh, we stunned right out of it, too. Huge right there. Wonder if that was Kellen or Halo with the Shield Bash. High ground trying to be fought over by Decay. Teaching Fitz a lesson after he found his head twice. They're almost having a nice record out here. Izayaki with the Transcendence. Just a nail in the coffin after cleaning up the rest of the New York Excelsior. Boston Uprising. Looking great in their first series that we get to see them debut in their Overwatch League 2023 season. And they take that final map macro over the Excelsior. I think that the Boston Uprising fans watching at their watch party are going to be pretty happy about that win for the Boston Uprising. Know there were some questions uh, leading into the start of the season, whether or not Boston Uprising were able to live up to those scrim buffs, but I think that they were able to put on a good show for us today. Maybe a couple of things that they need to iron out for later, but at the end of the day, they had strong mechanical skill, and they also had a great game plan to be able to take it to the New York Excelsior today. Boston strong for now. I guess New York's going to have to come back and fight in like the sports departments on, on other... <laughs> Yeah, See where they I go, mean. basically. I mean, yeah. and especially if you look at, I, I was talking to you, Necker, earlier on during our break about the schedule and the upcoming matches that we are going to be seeing for this, well, tomorrow, and then finishing off the following weekend. Uprising are, be, are playing London, and, you know, we've seen some weak sides of London coming out already at the start of the season. Will it remain persistent? But, man, with the tools on Uprising, is going to be difficult to overcome if you're facing off against this team. Again, this team is on another level, and what better player to highlight after the performance on that previous map than Decay? We talked about him earlier. He died twice at the very end, and he got his revenge right afterwards, but he had only died once right before the very third point. He's going to be our player of the match here. We get to see him on King's Row, where he also had a time of his life. Perez in the back line, specifically Halo, who consistently was the first one to die in a lot of these engaging fights here. But it's difficult because not only was it Halo, it was Creative that didn't have the best time against Creative, or rather Decay. So he had so many nice highlighted moments. Also, just splitting the team too from their back lines, splitting their attention. They were so fixated on trying to contest the rest of Uprising. The real problem here was Decay, Necro. Yeah, Decay is just honestly 
one of the best tracers in the league. I don't know how if there's anything else that we really need to say about that other than the fact that Decay pairs so nicely with the hacks coming through from the Sombra pair or just being able to follow up on things like the orbs of discord i mean okay maybe pulse bomb kills not necessarily the most impactful but you're really looking at decay being able to get those eliminations and final blows that i feel like was such a huge difference maker for decay being able to make the impact on the tracer They're constantly there like a shark smell blood in the water all the time yeah, when you don't have that fly swatter, it could be so cheeky and difficult to try to find an opportunity to swap that tracer who's harassing your supports. Smurf also just also gave him so much space to work with. Smurf also oh, yeah. popped off in that la last round. And you love to see it here from the Uprising. They do take the series in a clean 3-0 fashion. I don't want to see 3-0 Overwatch, Snekra. We're going to go over to a break. And on the other side, our desk is going to take you through the analytics of that last match. <laughs>
Birdring is flying high on his new team and you can climb high but don't touch with the first available legendary skin of 2023. Rock Climb Bazaria, you can see her in all her beauty on your screens right now. It's an including, uh, of course, the exclusive voice line uh, as well. And all of that can be yours for just 300 League tokens. Grab it now. I got mine already. You did? Yeah, of course. Wow. Isn't nice? I'm a Zarya enthusiast. A Zarya enthusiast. And uh, uh, aspirational rock climber. <laughs> aspirational. <laughs> Never climbed a rock in my life. You gotta go climbing sometimes, so you'd be good. Yeah. Natural. Yeah, I'm small. Like, surely that's. Right, no, so actually, actually you, it, just, it helps. Don't you need more reach? I feel no, like no, long, no. Le length is be, not. It's, it's, it's all nimble, about strength to weight ratios. To the, you'd be good. Okay. You'd be good. I'm there just gonna hit the gym. I hope they, you know, they started out with the rock climbing skin here. Um, I hope they make a skin for Danny coming up next, like maybe like metal climber, considering mm -hmm. a metal rank. So, Ooh, it makes sense. Okay. like a silver climber skin, maybe. All right, maybe. I don't want to fire the shots, but since, since you opened it, I just wondering, hey, how's your, yeah, how's your sure. top 500? I felt bad. Okay. Why did okay. I was like, look at Danny. Why did I pick on Danny? I'm oh, not, oh, so I'm not, That's going to come back, oh, though. Oh, yes. Yes. Your, your top bad. 500 place, man, where is it? I feel Looking bad. I'm sorry, yeah. Danny. Oh, Danny. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm Oof, sorry. Uh, I'd like to report a murder, which happened here on the desk. I should have uh, thought that. I'll keep him in check, guys. Don't you? It wasn't even funny. I feel <laughs> it really bad. wasn't. Yeah. yeah, no, you I should. And was you should funny, feel bad. I'm the worst. Uh, you know who doesn't feel bad? Boston Uprising, most likely, because they got the W. They looked and uh, they looked good, and they came to play. And that was a dominant performance that we hoped to see. That was a dominant uh, performance that we needed to see from the mm. Boston Uprising. Yeah, I think the rumors of their demise have been greatly overstated. This is I exactly what we would that. expect. Yeah, no, there were some, Could be some, anyone. some rumors Jake. in the bill, but they're not worth much when you're putting up wins like this. This is really, you know, we saw those wonderful, passionate fans at the watch party, and they're absolutely stoked for good reason. Like, this is the best you could possibly put up, an absolute domination of New York Excelsior. Dare I say, an even stronger win than what Atlanta pulled off uh, the other day. Yeah, I mean, this is a match you had to win if you were the Boston Uprising, because, you know, dare I say it, if they, if they had lost this match, it would have spelled trouble for the Boston Uprising yeah. for the season. I do want to give a huge shout out to all the fans who showed up in Foxborough and cheered on. Um, it's always great to see those clips coming in where you see the fans attending events and, uh, you know, the Boston Uprising organizing the event in the first place. So it was a treat to see all the fans out there supporting their team. Love to see that stuff. Yeah, chairs were lifted uh, there in celebration of the Boston Uprising's victory. Yeah, More of that. Did you not watch that? I didn't see it. Yeah, no, fans were popping off. You should have been, right. been there. Catch your flames. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Boston is great this time yeah. of the year, I heard. I so, yeah. He actually lived in Boston. For five years. Fun fact, wow. yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> wow. That's great information. You. Yay. <laughs> what he said, don't know what that means. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, I guess that works. Well, that's, out. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're ready to hear it from one of our winners, and this one is going to be DK. Danny, take it away. Thank you so much, Zoe. All right, DK, hello. Can you hear me? DK 선수 들리시나요? 목소리. 네, 들려요. 안녕하세요. All right, DK says hello. So, uh, I, I just want to ask you, DK. I mean, this Boston, new Boston Uprising team, there's so many star players, including yourself. You also got Bird Ring, Smurf, Izayaki, just there's so many star players. How does it just feel to be surrounded by such great players and playing uh, among with them? 자, 첫 번째 질문으로 이제 DK 선수, 당연히 DK 선수뿐만이 아니라 지금 현 보스턴 팀에 있는 선수들 전체들이 다 너무나도 어, 잘하는 선수들이기 때문에 이렇게 좀 쟁쟁한, 너무나도 좀 이렇게 네임 밸류가 높은 선수들과 같이 경기를 하는 거에 대해서 좀 어떠신가요? 어 처음 이 팀에 들어왔을 때부터 좀다 이제 다 성적도 좋고 이제 우승 커리어도 좀 많은 선수들이 많아 많아가지고 기대도 되고 솔직히 좀 걱정도 됐어요 이이 이 선수들 사이에서 제가 못하면 좀 그러니까 좀 그런 것 때문에 걱정도 되고 기대도 하고 좀 반반이었던 것 같아요. All right, I mean, uh, I think it's, I was sort of half and half as in, I was very excited, but at the, at the same time, sort of worried as well. Uh, you know, when I first came in, when I saw the full roster, uh, there were a lot of players that had, you know, that made great results in the past and had some winning experience as well. So because of that, I was excited, but at the same time, I was worried because, you know, if I sort of fall back behind or if I don't perform, then that would leave me, uh, leave me sort of looking a real, like, 
leave me looking pretty bad. So that was <laughs> what I was very worried about. Hey, but we don't have to worry about that because you got player of the match today and you are looking great. 그거는 좀 이제 걱정을 안 하셔도 될것 같습니다. 오늘 PO 팀도 먹고 어, 또 이제 트리스로 굉장히 좋은 모습을 보여주고 계시기 때문에 uh, I also do want to talk about you know because we're talking about the team. Like I just want to ask, uh, how is the team synergy? Like what what are the vibes in Boston uprising right now? 자, 두 번째 질문으로는 방금 이제 팀적인 얘기를 하기 때문에 이제 팀에 대한 좀 뭐, 뭐라고 할까요? 분위기라고 해야 될까요? 지금 현 분위기는 좀 어떤가요? 지금 이제 뭐 다들 잘 지내고 분위기 좋으신가요? 네, 저희 선수들은 좀 다른 팀은 잘 모르겠는데 저희는 좀 선수들끼리 좀잘 놀고 분위기 좋은 것 같아요. It definitely is. The vibe, vibes are actually very good because you know we actually take, uh, take time, we uh, hang out with each other. So yeah, there's nothing wrong. Everything is good. All right, okay, that is it for the interview. Thank you so much for your time, and again, uh, big congratulations on the win. 자 오늘 승리 다시 한번 축하 드리면서 DK 선수 인터뷰 감사합니다. 네 감사합니다. Thank you, DK. Congratulations to the Boston Uprising and shout out to the Boston Uprising for setting up really nice lighting in their interview setup. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah, no, I yeah, 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 credit yeah. where credit's due. I actually looked really nice. Okay. Yeah. Looking at some other teams who just, where the players just live in darkness. Yeah, Jesus. The perpetually looks, it looks very grim out there. Eyes, no, it really isn't. It really isn't. Uh, anyway, uh, that was that was a great showing from Boston Uprising, and good to hear that they're vibing. So uh, more of that, vibing. please. Exactly. Good vibes. Good now vibes. Uh, we're gonna vibe here as well because the last match of the day is what we would call the title match. This is the one which we're already hyped going into day number three, and of course it will be fought out between the San Francisco Shock and the Atlanta The big Rain. one. Ooh. It's the big one. And usually when we set it up like that, it absolutely falls no, flat. No, it's <laughs> going to be large. But like, this Every one time. Like, <laughs> might be ginormous or absolutely not. Uh, we'll find out very soon. First, let's take a look at the San Francisco Shock roster here. Danny, what good things do you have to say about them? I mean, they had their first uh, great looks against the uh, Toronto Defiant uh, I mean, on, the, on our first day. This team, I think they had a decent showing back then. And I'm pretty excited for this match because what we all know that proper is gonna do proper things, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm sort of kind of curious to see that proper against lip uh, battle, you know? Like, how's that gonna go as well? Yeah, for sure. Giants on the server. If we're looking at the Atlanta rain though, uh, I mean, Jake, we talked about this roster, I feel like every day and just hyped them up, gassed them up. Like those are star caliber players on every row. Yeah, a lot of very, very strong players to think about. I think especially Fielder and Shio are going to look really comfortable in a meta like this where it's very easy to fall on support. So their synergy, keeping each other alive, I think that's going to be a real linchpin for them. My only question is Hawk coming in. I think Atlanta has a slightly different read on the meta than a lot of other teams. So they're, like with Junmin coming in, it seems like Shock probably wants to play Winston. That's been pretty common, especially on control points. But Hawk coming in suggests that Atlanta feels that, uh, you know, maybe an off tank center composition is going to look better. So maybe we will get a clash of styles here. Which is always exciting to see how other players work around that. But 